Hi, my name is Andrew, and I'm here to show you two mini games I created. I made them because I recently had COVID and was stuck at home with nothing to do. So, I decided to combine Minecraft, a game I enjoy, and coding. It is split into two Python products that are connected. When you run the main one, it prints activated in the Minecraft chat to let the player know it's working. The first game is Hide and Seek. It can be played anywhere in a Minecraft world. The aim of the game is to find a diamond block that will be randomly hidden within a radius of you. In order to start the minigame, you have to type hide and seek in the chat. It will then prompt you to choose a radius. Once the block is randomly placed, you will have to find it. The game will print warmer if you're getting closer, or colder if you're getting further away. The game ends once you find the diamond block. It will also show you how long it took to find the block. The second game is Snake. To start the game, you have to write Snake in the chat. The game will then prompt you to select the difficulty. The difficulty changes the speed you start off with. If you select hard, the snake will start off quicker than normal or easy mode. Each diamond block you collect will increase your speed slightly. To control the snake, you have to type W, A, S, or D in the chat. The game ends when the snake either collides with itself or a wall. It will then also show you your score. Now for the code. Both games are connected together in two separate scripts, one with the main inputs and the hide and seek game, and the other with the snake game. It worked by using an API called Minecraft Python API, or MCPI, that allows Minecraft to be coded using Python. The code begins by importing the necessary libraries. This function is to calculate the distance between the player and the block you have to find. Since Minecraft is a 3D game, this required the use of the Pythagoras theorem. This is the main game loop. It runs once the script is activated. This starts both of the games by taking the player's input. For starting the snake, it uses a subprocess library to run the snake program. This uses the same libraries as the main one. It creates the board with gravel and sand using the calculated corners. To create a checkerboard type look, even blocks of sand and odd blocks of gravel. The next function is for detecting when the snake eats a diamond block or collides with itself, or the wall. It checks if it hits something by checking the snake's head coordinates and checking if it, if it exceeds the board. It does a similar thing to check if it's eaten food by checking if the snake's head's coordinates are the same as the diamond block. If it hasn't collided with anything, it removes the block at the end of the snake and places one in front. If the food is eaten, it then places the food in another random position. This is the main loop for getting player's input to control the snake. It also ensures that the snake does not get too fast to the point of it just teleporting around. It updates the food and sets the speed of the snake. 